Hey guys, it's Nate here with another data science interview question. This time the question comes from Facebook and it's a question that deals with the date and time data types. As always, I'm going to solve the question just like we're on an interview and give you some tips on how to approach the solution as well as how to efficiently and effectively communicate with your interviewer. So let's get started. But before that, if you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. So this question comes from Facebook. It's an easy level question, but I'll tell you anytime dealing with date data types or timestamps, um, it's always much more difficult than you originally think. So let's go through this problem. The question title is number of comments per user in the past 30 days. The question is really simple. It's return the total number of comments received for each user in the last 30 days. Assume today is February 10th, 2020. So before we start coding, before we write out our solution, what I want to talk about is my three step framework to solve any data science problem, uh, meaning any interview problem or any problem you get uh, on the job. So this three step framework can be used to really solve any data science problem. So the first step is to understand your data and to explore your data. What you're really trying to do is understand the assumptions in the data itself and understand the column headers that you're working with. The second step is to formulate your approach. And so what I mean by that is before you even start to code, what you want to do is just write out step by step what you're going to do in your code. This will help you just kind of understand what you need to do uh, to get to your solution, kind of providing a roadmap for yourself, but also to communicate to the interviewer and have that interviewer understand your line of thinking and also to validate your approach. And the third step is code execution. This is finally when you get to write your code. And so all you're really doing is writing your code in a way that follows the outline that you wrote in the previous step. So you're just going to be following that roadmap to a T and then hopefully at the end you have a solution that executes properly. So those are the three steps. Let's get started with the first step of understanding and exploring our data. All right, so let's take a look and explore our data. Uh, we have one table that we're working with, uh, Facebook comments count. It has three columns as well, so it's a pretty simple data set. One thing on interviews is you're probably not going to have access to the actual underlying data. So the only thing you are working with here are the names of the column headers. So we have user ID, created at, and number of comments. And so what I'm actually trying to do is uh, understand what these columns mean and what data it actually represents. Uh, so that's one. But two, I'm also trying to tie these column headers back to the question itself. So I'm trying to identify what columns I need uh, for the question itself and what columns I don't need, right? So when I look at user ID, that's pretty easy, right? The question reads, return the total number of comments received for each user. So obviously I'm gonna need user ID. Um, in the last 30 days, so this created at, uh, column header is a date time format. So obviously, you know, I'm going to need uh, to use the created at uh, column header because it's going to tell me when the comment was created. And then uh, it, in the first part of the question, again, it says return the total number of comments that would map to the column name number of comments. So, you know, the mapping is pretty easy uh, at this point. And so all I really want to do is just explain exactly what I'm thinking to the interviewer to basically have my interviewer validate all of what I just said and all of my assumptions. So now that we understand our data set, we're done with step number one in our framework. Step number two is to formulate our approach. And what we're trying to do here is to basically write out step by step how we're going to solve the problem before even writing any code at all. All right. So when I think about how to answer this question, we're, we're basically totaling uh, the number of concepts, filtering by date of the comment, and then um, aggregating everything on a user level, right? So when I think about how to actually do this, uh, what step one would be, I think the first step would be to filter the comments uh, basically by date so that we get uh, the last 30 days of comments. 
So here I can just write. So the first step is going to be to filter the data set from February 10th, 2020 to 30 days before. So on a high level, that's kind of what we want to do. It's up to you and the interviewer how much detail you want to write around these steps. You can get much more technical, like writing the functions you're going to use um, as you start coding, or you can just keep it at a high level, just like what I wrote here. So for me, I'm just going to keep everything on a high level. I, I'm going to explain some of the technical details when I start coding, because at least in this video, it's just a more appropriate time to do that. And then the second step would be to calculate the sum of the number of comments that there are in my filtered data set. So that's relatively easy. Um, and then we will group by user ID. So we'll basically be breaking up the total number of comments by users. So that's my three step approach. Again, it's an easy level problem, right? So I don't expect this to be like really long winded or difficult. Um, what will be sort of um, kind of technically challenging is going to be this first step here. So let's explain that. So we are done in terms of writing out the approach to our solution. Let's go to the third step of this framework, code execution. Okay, so I'm just gonna extend out the editor here. We are gonna start with just calling the data set here. All right, and if we just kind of uh, run this query right here, what we have, as you can see in the output, uh, is obviously the user ID, the date the, the comment was created, and then the number of comments that were created on that day for that user. And you see that this is basically just a date uh, stamp right here. Uh, so if we are saying that the first date, the date of reference is February 10, 2020, and we wanna filter the data set to 30 days uh, before uh, you know February 10th, we can do it in two ways, right? Um, I'll do it one way right now. Let's call this uh, the, the, the static way. And so what we can do here is just add a where clause that just basically says, you know, the credit at um, column is going to be between January 10th, 2020 and February 10th, 2020. And what I'm doing is I'm casting these um, uh, these dates to a date data type, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, but what I just did was just basically jump the month because the assumption is 30 days is a month, right? This is the static way. You're basically calculating by hand what that uh, date actually is if you were to count 30 days before February 10th, 2020. Is that the right way to do it? Maybe, is this actually 30 days? I don't really know. I was just kind of like roughly counting. What's really tough about this is February only has 28 days. January has 31 days. Um, if you're in other uh, months, you have to figure out if it's 30 days or 31 days and it's it gets messy, right? I don't think any interviewer would be impressed if you're just going to manually enter in a date here. You don't want to do this on an interview you don't want to do this on your day job. Anything manual that can be automated and can be dynamic, um, you should really go that route, all right? So we are actually going to go the dynamic method. So I'll just write dynamic method here. And what I'm going to implement is, and instead of just manually entering the date, I am going to input basically a calculation that will take me 30 days before February 10th. And I have the original date of reference here, February 10th. And then I have multiplied by 30 times an interval of one day, right? And so what this is doing is it's subtracting 30 days from February 10th, 2020, without me actually having to do that in my head. So a few things to consider here. Like I said, um, dealing with Dates and timestamps is kind of hard, especially when you're new at this. So let me explain to you what we're actually doing. So an interval is essentially a function that will help you create units of time for date time data types, right? So this is a date time data type, it's one day. So we are basically creating a unit of time here, one day or 24 hours, and then we are multiplying that by 30 to get to 30 days. And what the output of that is, is basically 30 days as a timestamp data type. Okay, and so once I get that, I'm just subtracting February 10th 
by 30 days, and I'm gonna actually get uh, an output from that. So actually, if I wanna test it out, what I can do is just copy and paste this thing right here and put that in and just run this code to see what we get. We get January 11th, 2020, right? And then this is, this is obviously the date down here. And then this is the timestamp that we we're just gonna ignore. Um, and there's so many rows just because um, we are going and progressing through the entire table and just putting in uh, this calculation. So you can ignore the number of comments in that output, but the answer to you know the date, uh, if you subtract 30 days from February 10th is January 11th, 2020. So we know that's correct. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, and so this is done right here. We filtered the data set for um, February 10th, 2020 to 30 days prior to that. Now what we wanna do is just calculate the sum of the number of comments. So what I'm gonna do is just write sum num number of comments, right? As total comments. And then taking the third um, step here, group by user ID, I'm just gonna do user ID, comma, then that, then the sum. And of course, we're gonna do a group by user ID. So we run this code here, get the user ID, we get the total number of comments. Of course, the data sets already filtered uh, to basically this interval right here and right here. And if I check the solution, my solution is correct. So if this makes sense to you, that's great. I just have a few other kind of nuances to explain uh, that are important for uh, just knowing the technical concepts. Right here, I am uh, casting um, this red text to a date. So originally, SQL doesn't know that this is a date because I'm just entering in characters, right, or numbers in this case, and I'm putting quotes uh, around it so it, it thinks it's text. So it's not gonna be able to calculate the interval of 30 days. Uh, so what I need to do is cast uh, basically this, this date string right here to a date data type. There are two ways to do it. Uh, because this is a Postgres engine, I can just do a um, double colon and say date and it converts it automatically to a date data type. Um, I can also just say as date and use the cast function just like I'm doing there. Just do the same thing for this as well, cast as date um, and this string in red will just be casted to a date data type. If I run it my code still runs, I get the output I need, um, just in a different way. Um, this uh, syntax obviously is good for Postgres, but you can use this for MySQL as well. So it, it's um, interchangeable, so it could be used across multiple data-based engines. Also, another little nuance, I don't really need to use the between. If you're not comfortable using the, the between, uh, what you can do is just use inequalities. You can just say, you know, um, created at needs to be uh, basically greater than this date right here. Maybe we'll just do greater and equal to or something like that. And then you can just say created at would be less than or equal to the future date or the date of reference here. Uh, so this actually needs to be greater than or equal to um, the lower bound of the date, right? And then this will be uh, less than the upper bound of the date. So if I run this code, I basically get the exact same output. Check the solution. Solution is still correct. Um, I'm basically just doing this uh, in a different way, but it, it all works at the end of the day. All right, so those are just two little nuances you can play with. Um, obviously, there are multiple ways to get to this answer. Um, the trick on the interview or the trick to this question was really about dealing with uh, date time. 
All right, guys, that's it for me today. This was an interview problem from Facebook. It was an easy level problem, but dealing with date and time data types is um, often really hard, especially for beginners. So it might not naturally have been an easy question to solve. But again, if you use the framework that I outlined in the very beginning about laying out your assumptions uh, while you are exploring and looking at the data, then uh, writing out the approach and then getting it validated with the interviewer and then writing out your code um, and just basically mapping it back to the outline or the steps you wrote, you would have an easier time solving the problem than if you just like dived right in and just started coding. So really the tip here is organize your approach in logical concise steps Talk to the interviewer to make sure he or she understands exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it and get all of your assumptions validated. I would practice this framework um, and practice organizing your thoughts before coding and answering these questions will become much, much easier. All right, that's it for me. If you like content like this, please refer to my playlist with a dozen or so uh, data science interview questions. Um, and also please subscribe to this channel uh, just to be alerted whenever I come out with new content. All right, thanks everyone.